Hello, in this tutorial we're going to show you how Cut3D can be used to load three-dimensional models such as this rooster file and calculate roughing finishing toolpaths and finally preview the results of a 3D carved picture frame such as the one that we have here in the three-dimensional window. So if we start by closing the file, so file close, load a new file here we're going to work with the Rooster V3D file. The software will also open many other mesh type files such as STL, 3D Studio, 3D DXF, etc. So we load the Rooster file. I can twiddle in the three dimensional view by clicking the left mouse button and moving the mouse around. We start with step one where we orientate the model so we decide which face we wish to cut. We can also mirror the model to make it look in different directions. We can also scale it to any size. So in this example we're going to cut it 12 inches by 9 inches and we're going to the whole model at the moment is 1.8 inches thick but we're only going to cut half of the rooster down the z-axis. So we say we're going to do single sided machining and apply. Click the next button which takes us to step 2. Step 2 we specify the material limits, so at the moment we have a design that's 12 by 9 inches, let's say we want the width to be 14 inches and the length to be 12 inches, let's say we have a piece of material that's only an inch and a half thick, hit the apply button, this tells me that the cut plane has automatically been positioned at the bottom of the material which is at 1.5 inches, click OK. If we twiddle and look along the y-axis, you'll see now we have the piece of material that's the black wireframe there represents the material, which is one and a half inches thick, which is slightly less than the 1.8 inches thickness for the model, but that's okay. Next, we specify that we want a border around the model. At the moment, we're going to cut the dark rectangular area, and the cutter can't get down the sides on the design, so we say Let's cut an extra 0.3 of an inch around the design and apply. So now we've got room for the cutter to, to go all the way around the design. Next we position the, the cut plane. If we move the slider you'll see that the, the cut plane moves. We just position like so. Move the, the dark green plane is the Z plane or Z plane that the cutter will cut onto. If we position this at about 1.1 inches and apply. So the length of cutter that we need has to be able to cut 1.1 inches, maximum depth of cut. And we click the next button. We go to step 3 which is the roughing toolpath. Select the cutter. For this example we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. And we could use any tools that we have available. Um, so we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. You'll see that the pass depth, step over, speeds and feeds etc. are all set up. Click OK. We can edit the parameters that if we wish, so we can switch this on. If we were cutting very soft material, for example, we could say, OK, we think that the cutter can actually cut 0.3 of an inch in one pass. We'll use a 40% step over because we're roughing. The spindle speed, feed rates to match the machine. We're going to have a clearance gap above the job of 0.1 of an inch. This is the height that the cutter will retract to when it's moving at rapid rate to get to machine different areas on the design. We're going to leave 40 thousandths on the design for the finishing cutter to machine off in a second operation. We'll use Z level roughing and we can raster along either X or Y axis, let's say the X axis, and we can profile around at each level if we wish. Calculate. So the toolpath, the roughing toolpath has now been calculated. If we view along the Y axis, and we can push and pull with the right mouse button to zoom in or out, you'll see that we've got multiple Z-level planar roofing passes. Click the next button. We go to step 4 which is the finishing toolpath. Select the cutter. In this example we're going to use a quarter inch bore nose. A much smaller step over this time, 15% because we want a smooth surface finish. Spindle speed and feed rates going to cut it at 45 degrees, 
so 45 degrees across the design and calculate. Software is now calculated. Finishing tool button has been calculated. Click the next button. We could use the step 5 to cut the design out if we wish but in this example we don't use the, the cutout toolpath. Click next. We go to the step 6 which is preview the machining or preview the toolpaths. Here we can preview the roofing toolpath. So this shows us what the roofing toolpath will machine. You can see that it's machining in slices or different Z level layers through the design. Next we can preview the finishing toolpath and this is cutting the 40 thousandths off, cutting to the finished size that we specified. Remember that this toolpath is cutting down onto the cut plane. So the cut plane we specified to be 1.1 inches deep and you'll see down in the bottom right hand corner here you'll see that the, the depth and the XY position is, is displayed for anywhere on the design we can change the material that we view the model in so we can say a piece of cherry we get an estimate for the machining time total estimated machining time we can then click the next button select the machine tool that we have so select the post processor for example let's say we have a Mac so we have the Mac post processor select save the roofing toolpath give the toolpath a name, save the file, save the finishing toolpath, give the toolpath a name, save it to disk and the toolpaths are ready for saving and sending to your CNC machine. So just to summarize, we've loaded the three-dimensional model, specified the size that we wish to cut the design at, <coughs> we're using single-sided three-axis machining and we go to step two, we then specified the actual ma material size so this was bigger than the design we added an allowance all the way around the design of 0.3 of an inch and we positioned the cut plane to cut for the cutter to, to cut onto step 3 was the roughing toolpath step 4 was the finishing toolpath we, we're not cutting the piece out we'll look at that in a different tutorial we previewed the results and finally we save the toolpath after selecting the post processor that we wish to use and save the toolpath ready for cutting on the machine. I hope you found the tutorial interesting and uh, thank you for watching.